Hello, Muslims of Dearborn. As you may know, this coming Monday, July 12th, is the first court appearance of the Freedom Four, and one of the first steps in defending the constitutional rights of American citizens against the tyranny of the Dearborn Police Department. Interestingly, the open persecution of Christians by Chief Haddad's Sharia Task Force is expanding the work of Act 17 in Dearborn. You see, normally we'd only be coming to your city once per year as part of the Arab Festival outreach. But now, with a series of criminal and civil court cases constantly bringing us back to the area, we've got some awesome opportunities for regular evangelism in Dearborn. This is just Bible 101, by the way. What man intends for evil, God can use for good. So, even though the Dearborn Police Department is trying to harm and persecute us, it's actually good news for you, my Muslim friends. How is it good news, you wonder? Well, let me ask you a question. If what you believe is false, do you want to know it? If what you believe is false, do you want to know it? Or would you rather continue believing in something that just isn't true? If you're the sort of person who would rather believe in something that's false because it makes your life easier somehow, there's probably no point in talking to us. But for those of you who say, yes, David, if what I believe is false, I want to know it. We need to talk, my friends. Have you ever wondered whether Islam is true? Have you ever thought to yourself, hey, maybe I only believe in Islam because my parents taught me to believe in Islam. But what if my parents were wrong? If you've ever asked yourself a question like that, we can help you. We can prove that Muhammad was a false prophet and that the Quran is not the word of God. That's easy. But our message isn't just a refutation of Islam. We can also prove that Jesus is the divine son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead. We can even answer all of those questions that your leaders tell you to ask Christians in order to supposedly refute Christianity. You know what I'm talking about. They tell you to ask your Christian friends, where did Jesus say, I am God, worship me? How many times have you heard that one? Would you like an answer? Because we'd be happy to answer all of your objections. Think we can't? This Sunday, July 11th at 7.30 p.m., we're going to return to Warren Avenue to the area where the festival takes place. We'll be bringing our Bibles and Qurans with us, and we're prepared to discuss both. So if anyone would like to challenge our views, or if anyone has questions about Christianity or Islam, we're happy to engage in public dialogue. I'll give you fair warning, however. We will have video cameras with us. It should be obvious by now that we can't go anywhere in Dearborn without cameras. Every time we come to your city, people start saying we did all kinds of things that we just don't remember doing. And the only way to prove our innocence is with video footage. Now, if we talk to you for a few minutes and we realize that we can trust you, and you don't want the cameras on, we can turn them off. But until we know your intentions, we have to protect ourselves. At this point, some of you may be thinking, David, don't you understand that this is Dearborn and that the police department is under the control of Islam? Don't you realize that we can snap our fingers and Chief Haddad will have all of you arrested, even if you've done absolutely nothing wrong? Well, it's true that if you want Chief Haddad to arrest all of us for trying to have a peaceful dialogue, he'll probably do it. He did it last time. It's also true that if you tell him to steal our camera equipment, he'll probably do that too. He's still got a couple thousand dollars worth of our property locked away at STF headquarters. So, yes, I'll grant that the Muslims of Dearborn have an entire police department in their pocket. But is this really the image of Islam you want the world to see? Last year, Muslim security guards slapped us around for asking a question about the Quran. This year, police arrested us while Nabil was having a peaceful dialogue with Muslims. There are terrorist attacks all over the news. People are starting to learn that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl, that he allowed his followers to rape their female captives, that Muslims can beat their rebellious wives. Islam's getting a bad reputation. Do you also want Islam to be known as the religion whose followers can't bear to have their views challenged? Now, if you, if you studied Islam, you know that Muslims are supposed to subjugate unbelievers and establish Sharia law through force if necessary. But you also know that before you oppress and subjugate unbelievers, you're supposed to invite them to Islam. So you invite first, and then later on, if they reject your message, you oppress and subjugate them. This is Quran 101. Surah 16, 105 says, invite all 
to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching, and argue with them in ways that are best and most gracious. The Quran commands you to invite us to Islam and even to argue with us. Do you want to obey Allah's command in the Quran? If so, we'll see you this Sunday at 7.30 p.m. on Warren Avenue at the Festival Area. You can invite us to Islam, as you are commanded to do, and we'll preach the gospel to you, as we are commanded to do. Of course, it won't surprise me if no Muslims show up. If you don't want to discuss these issues, that's fine. As long as we're able to walk down the street in Dearborn without being physically assaulted and without being unlawfully arrested, as long as you recognize our constitutional rights in your city, I'll consider that an amazing step forward given what I've seen over the past two years. But I hope to find some Muslims in Dearborn who are willing to engage in rational dialogue. Whatever happens, though, remember this. We're not just fighting for our rights, my Muslim friends. We're fighting for your rights as well. If the police department starts dictating what people get to discuss and when and where they get to discuss it, we all lose. So even though many of you cheered when you saw police enforcing Sharia law and hauling us off in handcuffs for being Christians in Dearborn, you might want to reconsider your position. If our rights go out the window, yours could be next. Don't let Dearborn become the first city in America to shred the U.S. Constitution.